Hello and welcome once again to the special interview on THD TV. We're live today coming from you at the local hotel in the Gambia. This is a special edition because we're talking sports and uh, meeting no other person than one of our promising Gambian young star who passed through all the young ladies and rose to ranks, MLS, you know, went to many other countries to play his professional footballers. But we'll not do all the talking. And um, I know you already know who we're talking about. But before we go any further, like we always said, this is your baby TV in town. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our videos. Do you give us your comment. Tell us what you think about our videos and our programs. And you can like and also share our activities. Once again, thank you for joining us. Um, before we go any further, let me just welcome my guest on the show. It's no one than Umar Jassi, but he's well known by many football followers in this country as Waterman. And well, no wonder, we are behind the Waterman. <laughs> what a great day. Welcome, bro. It's good to have you again and good to see you again. It's been a long time. How are you keeping? Yeah, it's my pleasure to come back always and uh, to speak my mind. And when you come to football and... Um, like I said, I am always happy, you know, to speak with you guys, especially when you come to Gambians football. Well, we follow Kumar Jassi when he was at Samga. This is where, you know, the rising of this young man began. You know, at some point, you know, you've been projected as one of the, you know, greatest or young future players for this country. and. Um, Things started more, but let's let's talk about you yourself. How have you been with your professional career before we get into all those things? Yeah, <clears throat> as a Gambian footballer, and um, I started everything in Gambia here from the Never Towns or from the school teams. You know, start to people start to recommend recommend my talent. You know, from primary schools, I start to have name from the schools since I was playing for the, my junior schools, and then I went to divisionals, uh, the Never Towns. Zonals, you know, and everything start to get bigger, not by money wise, but my name and the talent is getting bigger, and people start to recommend it, and then everything goes well, and then I went to uh, the divisional team Samga, where I started from the bottom, like the academic, then we went to from the third division to second division to first division, in the uh, less than that two years, so that people start to recommend most of our talents in that team. And I was lucky also in that team to pick, uh, they, they picked me from that team to, to present for the Gambia under 17 team. Then from there also, I have chance to go to England. So everything was a little bit quicker yeah. of my career when I started in Gambia. So many, that's why many people they don't know me in person. Yeah. They just heard my name. So even I have that when I, people see me in Gambia, oh, are you Waterman? So you can meet many people don't know me in person. They just heard my name because of also, you know, I went Gambia so early, you know, the early age, since 2006. That's like 17 years, it. yeah. So, and then I went to England. Then I was there in the Charlton. Yeah, there they saw my talent also, you know, because it was a little bit difficult in England to stay there because of their rules and stuff. The working permit, the working permit the and stuff. So, the time. age and stuff, I was so young. They could not allow me to stay like, like that. So after I came back, you know, work hard a little bit and go back there. So I start to stay longer. They start to see the way, how can I stay there, you know. So after three years, I was in Chelsea, in Crystal Palace and the Charlton Athletic, you know. I was there for almost a year. Then they try everything to get me for the working permit when I was turning 17. Because you can have a, in England, you can, when you are young, under 16, you can have a scholar's contract yeah. and pro contract. Control. So yeah, so, but then I came to Gambia to get a long visa so that we can go back you know, they can take us to France or Belgium because so many English teams have those kind of connections with those yeah. teams. The because of clubs in other, leagues, other no? special, when you are foreign now, you cannot get a working permit. So you yeah. can be there for two years, then you can get a European citizenship. You can come to England. So we, we came back to Gambia to get those visas and we get it and then we go back to Gambia so we can prepare us to go to Belgium or the France. They're trying to see which one the best. So, but things, uh, the team, England, and they start to have problems of financial and they sell their 
top their stadiums and yes, top yes, players. Yes. So yeah. it's hard for us there to find a loss. So, but you know, they let me stay there and they're trying to find find way. It could not go. Then uh, I went to Chelsea. That time Mourinho was there, but things didn't work also because of it was difficult for him. There's, it was suck. Then I came back, and then I went to Crystal Palace. Then Crystal Palace took me. And then I was there for a long time. I was there with Victor Moses, uh, Wilf Saha. He's one of the best players now in the Premiership, you know. And, and uh, football is like lucky and funny. But those people, they have European citizenship. I can remember when we were in Crystal Palace. I used to show Wilf Saha how to dribble players. You know, even when he made his first debut, I have the email from Crystal Palace because we were so connected. They told me Wilf Saha is making his debut today, your boy. Which I was so happy now. That's if amazing. I see him now, You're he's one of the best players in the Premiership. So, like people like me, I'm so I saw him some of the tricks, you know, because I was so amazing. Because you were so, you know, yeah, great so, in doing yeah, that. Yeah, things. So they they always talk about me. That so, is why you quickly, you know, spotted by by players. But you passed through many big clubs, you know, and at some point you were even projected to be one of the best young, you know, um, Gambian players. But the journey seems to be rough along the way. What do you think went wrong for Omar Jassi? Yeah, um, things happen, you know, and people have different way of life, you know. But like I said, so many things happen because of, not because of your talent, not because of you cannot do it, but the, the right place and the right times is important. So, especially when you don't have the European papers, you know. I started in England. I wish I could have started in Spain or Italy. Those people to get your papers is so easier than England. So, so many things, you know, wasted my time. It's like this European papers and this working permit. Yeah. Still, you're pushing on and you're still, you know, keeping it very tight mm -hmm. to continue the dream that you have for this country. You know, um, uh, you've moved from different places now, looking at your background, Crystal Palace, Chelsea, you know, Charlton, you know, play with players who are notable today, one of the biggest players in world football. And uh, you're still coping with the situation to be able to get there. Uh, what are you up to? Do you really look at an uh, agent that you believe can help you reach there? Because agents, most of the time, are the problems of this country. Mm. Yes, Gambia is, not, is a small country when you come to football. Very, very small. So many people don't recognize Gambia that much. That's why maybe the Afghan could have helped us more. And I think, you know, it helped us also in somehow people to know Gambia a little bit because you can say that we were in the African Cup nation, but it's still difficult because when you come to food, uh, compared to Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria, they are above us, you know. But uh, like I said, things happen, you know. I keep going because I was in. Then after when I left to England, I have a contract to go to play in MLS in the early age. I was the youngest player ever in the history of San Jose to play there. You know, it was a good experience, but it was not my wish that time. You know, I was living in the best city, California and stuff. But after two years and then when I play against Gary Bale, Luka Morich and uh, Peter Odawindi, the Nigerian, we, I have so many emails with them. They try to help me. Even they said, you are so talented to be in the MLS now. You have to go to yeah, Europe. Europe. That's where, you know, you might. You can show, yeah, you might and stuff, yeah. yeah. So then after that, I try to, I have this opportunity to go to Wonder Bremen in 2013. Yeah. I was there with Kevin De Bruyne and stuff. Then, I, like I said, I went there, everything was fine. I played some good games there in training session, and the coach was so impressed of me. And he's one of the, also the, one of the best coach in Germany. His name is Thomas Saf. He's the one who coached Ozil, Diego. He took them to Champions Leagues, you know, closer, you know, uh, World Cup, top leading goal scorer, closer. Yeah, so I went there also. The coach said, OK, I will give you pre contract because I went there in February. So I can only sign my uh, permanent contract in June because of the time. So the coach gave me a prayer contract. But things didn't go well. The coach was sacked before the... The, con you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the transfer the window open. Yeah, on board. Yeah. So the new coach came. I understand because the team was struggling a little bit also. So the new coach said, OK, Omar, you are so talented. But now with this situation, we want to bring experienced players who can help us to, to stay in the league. So, you know what I mean? If we were, because that time Bremen they don't have a second team. Second yeah. team they they are playing like the fourth league or third league. So they said if we were having that we would put you there. But now on your space I want to give it to experienced players. So that's why I lose also that contract. 
then I went back to America. But my objective, I was, I went to America, I went back to Poland, Timbers, Footy Dancers yes, team. Yes, Footy Dancers team, yeah. They like me, but I told them I don't want to stay. All yeah, my future is to Europe again. You were targeting Europe. In Europe, because I want to make it big there, and so that, you know, like, if you make it big there, it's easier for your country, like Sergio Mane or, or mm. Ella Ju. They all came Eto. through this young yeah, team, junior yeah, team. So if you are, make it bigger, it's easier also to market your country to market your players. Like right now, Senegal can make it any player any easy player because of there are some of certain players' names in Europe. First scouts come to Generation yeah. Foods, yeah. you know, to take players there straight to the to European Yeah, leagues. European. So it's yeah. easier. So my dream was that because I'm ambition here, people really have so many ambitions. They think I can make it bigger because of the talent I am having, you know. So then I, Poland Timbers, I didn't take the contract. I was there with Footy. Then I said I want to come back to Europe. Then I came back to Europe, but still I was having a little difficulty because of this paperwork, the visa. I have always come into Gambia. I spent most of my time in Gambia than spending because of I went to Germany. I signed two teams. I came to Gambia for working permit, go to Senegal. They rejected it because of some of the requirements they have. So a lot of my time was because of these visas and working permit. I know people don't understand. They will think, ah, side of a buy or home, or yeah. but they don't know yeah. what is inside. You've been working behind the scene. Though. Yeah, you've been working <laughs> behind the scene. So which is normal because people have so many. You know, when your stars or your fans then see their star playing, yeah. most of the time they become, you know, confused. They mm. want to know what you're up to. So now you've moved from different different level, and got some experience that you believe can help you as a footballer mm. and as a human being. What is your level now in football? What level are you in football now? Yeah, now I should say like um, I am back like where I was wishing to be in a professional setup, especially in Germany, mm -hmm. you know. So, but last year I was playing like more lower league. But like I said, I believe in myself. I said, look, I will go there, perform, because it's Europe. When you, wherever you play, you do good, people will talk about you yes. easily. Because I did it here in Gambia. I was playing never turns. Then everybody was talking about me. Before I traveled, people write newspapers of mm -hmm. me. So I said, why not? Here is more bigger. Yeah. So I went there. I've been to this fifth league. I killed it there. Scored 16 goals. Make 10 minutes assists. I think I saw you this. Yeah, yeah. I saw the statistics stuff. are there for us to yeah, see. So that's yes. why even when the other teams were signing me, Vattenside then came. Before Vattenside, I have a team in Turkey. Vattenside is in which league? Now in the uh, regional league. In the regional uh, league. In Germany. Of, in Germany. Yes. But it was a Bundesliga team. Bundesliga this, team. This uh, legend Senegal, Suleiman Sani, Sa the dad yeah. of Lauren Sani. Yeah, Lauren Sani. He make his name there. Yeah. They are where he see and have their wife until those kids are yeah. born from there in Vatan side. Yeah. Even Lauren Sani started there. Yeah. Then he went to Selkam because it's all connected. Yeah, exactly. So when I did last year in that team, good. So I have so many options. But the problem is that also my visa was finished in the first one year working permit was finished. So this lawyer, I put like a long working permit visa because after two, three years, you can put long visas. Yeah. So I was waiting if with the corona, everything was a little bit slow. But inside Germany, it's no problem. I can play and wait. Then after the season finish, this team come because they watched me twice called yes. Hayata Sport. Yeah. And then they said, we are interested in you. Hayata Sport also playing in the Bundesliga? In no, the no, in, 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 Turkey, in, Turkey, in Turkey. In Superliga. In the Superliga in Turkey. The captain was Mambiram Juve, the Senegalese. Okay. The Senegalese. Senegal okay. Former Manchester yeah, players, yeah. you know. So. Um, they came to me and they said, we are interested to you. We watch you twice. The, our, our main scout came here to watch your searches. He said, you have raw talented, pure talented, and that's more interested in, with yeah. us, you know. And then we want to take you to Turkey. So I said, I speak with some of my managers and stuff. And I told them, look, I have this problem. I can go to Turkey, make money. But in what will happen next to come back to Europe is hard. I need to look for visa. And this one, I already put like a permanent Stay, stay, yeah, stay in Germany. Doc documentation so there. we speak about it. They take. I said the best thing, you stay in Germany. And next minute, Vattenside came. They said we want to offer him a contract. Vattenside is one of the big teams in Germany. In, well, everybody knows the teams. Yes. So we talk about it. And I speak to the coach. He said I watch you twice. You are so talented. I know you can even play Bundesliga. Yeah. The coach tell me that your talent even is not for here. It's Bundesliga, but you have to come back here, play again because it's televised on our yeah. league. It's televised and people can watch it on TV and stuff. And then, who knows, you can be back in Bundesliga or second league. I said, okay, and you wait for your papers. You make so you got your papers on time. And like football is all about connection. They, they speak with their, I think in Germany, how they say, Bürgermeister is like a mayor, yeah. the mayor of the city. Yeah. So my papers can be fast track. And the lawyers, and they make it fast track and they... And you got your documents. Quick, yeah, wow. because of those kind of names. And they helped me. Then I said, okay, I will sign with them for one year. 
then I keep going. It's a very good level. Then that's how I end up signing there. And I speak to Mambiram Juf, also mm. he advised me. He said, look, I already play Manchester United. I make so much money, Stoke, but you, your situation, I guess you stay in Germany and wait for your resident permit. Anytime you can come to Turkey, then if nothing work, work with you, yes. you can go back to Europe easy. Yeah. But if you come now, things didn't work with, out it, with it's you, gonna be difficult. then it's difficult. You have to go back to Africa, look for visum, those processes long. So also, you know, I take his uh, advice, then I stay and I sign with the team, then I'm keep going it now, you know. As of now, um, you know, what are your targets, you know, um, as a footballer, and how do you intend to achieve that? Yeah, for me, like sometimes, like uh, like the coach, sometimes he see that mentally. He think mentality. I have so many stress, how, how my career goes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the game, you can see I am very quiet. He always talk to his head. You know, you can understand the things how he go through and things didn't work with him. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like right now, I'm just playing. Whatever comes in my way, I will take it. But I'm not thinking about to be like world best player or stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just play because of so many... That's a honest opinion. Yeah, man. because I, my time wastes a lot of things, you know, yeah. of football. The time I'm supposed to be real, real star in Europe, I think a lot of things wasted. It's football, things happen. Luka Modric won best, world best player when he was 37, 36. Absolutely. Messi win World Cup 35. But it's a different way, but I'm just saying whatever come on my way. Everything is possible. Yeah, anything yeah, can happen. still well, hopeful well, that there's something yeah, that can happen. I'll just yes. do my thing. People recommend my talent, that's more important. But right now I just play, respect my football, respect my training. Whatever come on my way, I will take it. What is your connection with Gambian football? You know, since you, you left the Gambia, mm. uh, we've seen a lot of young players just like you, you know, also come up. And today, Gambian football, others have seen have moved to another level. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have the same sense that Gambian football has moved to another level? Yeah, 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 if you compare to like 10 years back or 6 years back, we don't have players, a lot of players who are playing in Serie A or France or other league. And now we are having it, so which is very good, you know. And with heart also, we would love to see players from Gambia going to play in Premiership straight like that, you know what I mean? But it will be difficult, you know, but, but I think a little bit when you come to the football achievement, little bit footballers is getting bigger because you see players like they play in Serie A, Musa Baro, Omar Kohli, uh, Ibrahim Kohli, Yusuf Bob, Yusuf and, Bob and all of them, Alamin yeah. I mean, Jalo, mm. all of them they Musa play in Jawara, Musa Jawara, Jawara yeah. and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. They all play in, the, uh, in Serie A in the name of Gambia, yeah. which is also very good. So you will see things are moving. So if you see like 10 years ago, you will not see that. Yeah. You only see players playing have, Sweden, oh yeah. Finland, We have like three MLS. professionals that yeah, always sometimes. come to so, play. So things yeah. are moving when it comes to players' uh, achievement, which is, I'm very happy with it. So sometimes I speak, my friend, oh, my friend is playing for this team. This is a Gambian. So which is very good because before, they would ask you where your players are playing. Which is Do difficult. you still dream of playing for Gambia? Um, like I said, national team is for everyone. You know, as far as you are performing, you are doing good, why not? What is your connection with the Gambian national team? For instance, do you ever have a call from the national coach? Hey, Waterman, I want to come and watch you in one of the leagues. Or did he know anything about you as a Gambian footballer? Uh, maybe he will heard about me, but I, I never speak to him personally. You know, just maybe some people will ask me questions. Why are you not in the national team? People, they will start pointing fingers. But this player is playing this, this lower league than you, but they're calling him. But who knows what kind of connection they have there? It's Gambia, you know what I mean? But for me... So do you believe that you play in a better league than some folks who will be calling a national team? Yes, for sure. For sure. As far as, like I said, football is very important. Yes. As far as you went to internet, Google the players, you see mm. the leagues and which other leagues are playing. But those things is not my concern that much. It's the coach decision who makes his own choice. So my, my only job is to play football and, you know what I mean? Are you disappointed as a Gambian footballer you know, trying to do your best to get the national call and uh, not being recognized by those who are, those who are you know, um, responsible for that. Yeah, it's somehow I can say I'm disappointed, like I said, because of this is my job. I've been doing this all my life. I didn't stay in America because of, oh, I don't want to come back to Gambia or England yeah. or in Canada. You know, so many of my friends did that. But for me, because of football, I said, oh, if I do this, then I am not Waterman again. 
So I came back here, start again, try to play football with some of the teams. So I, I was thinking, mm -hmm. if you see talent like that and people know him so much, he's back in the pitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think your own people should help you more than ignoring you or even try to talk to you and you know try to see your opinion. But I see that those things lack a lot when you come to those things in Gambia. You know what I mean? They don't care. Ah, no, let me just see. So because you see some of the players, they are calling them who even Gambians don't know them. But they are call, calling them in the national team who are playing like lower leagues in Europe. But do you do you try to find out because you also play in a league and you're Gambian, you want to play in a Gambian team? Do you find out how is that connection coming to the Gambia? Like for instance, you just mentioned there are players that Gambians don't know about mm -hmm. who play in six, seven, or four leagues, but they're still having a call up in the Gambian team. Do you also try to find out as someone who dreamed to play for the country? Yeah, but you know here is Gambia. We are all connected. You know, you will hear things, you know, easily. Yes. Oh, this, this because of this, this one who recommend this guy to this, you know what I mean? Because some of these players, the coach never watch them. Their games are not on TV. He will never fly there to watch them. So you, you must have reference from someone. Yes. We all know that. So the coach will never go and watch them in their leagues. You can see the, the coach, even when he posts some players he watch, or he went there, but not all of them. Some yeah. of them, he, their games are not on TV. Some of them, he will never go and watch them. But it's about reference from other people who are working with them. You know what I mean? That's all I can understand that. But So why I mean? is it difficult for you to, to work for you in the Gambia? Didn't you have people you know, that can connect you to the Gambia football? Not to come in the back way, but to also give them the chance you know, of seeing what you can do as far as this country is concerned. Yeah, but I, I think most of people are watching internet and they have Facebook. They are seeing what I'm doing on the Facebook. They, if you see somebody who is playing, you can still Google and say, oh, we are happy to see him back and stuff. And you watch watch him on internet. You can see on Facebook. Everybody's using Facebook. And you are very active on social media yeah, as well. You so always I'm, post I, I, your, yeah, your, your, I, your games as well. Just to know people, I'm still going. But a lot of my friends, are, they don't want to even post anything. They want to isolate themselves. But for me, I'm always happy to show my achievement and what I'm doing. You mentioned something earlier to say, you know, when you're in a difficult moment, it's your people that need to stand by your side. Do you feel betrayed by Gambian? Yeah, particularly I, those in football. Yeah, I can say that because for me, I sacrifice a lot for Gambian football. Because I remember when I came, uh, C.D. Kinte is my witness and Masana Kinte, who was there before. I came to under 20 and I was playing professional. I think I am the only one who was playing men professional. Other things, other players who came to that under 20, we qualified in South Africa. Yeah. Nobody was, nobody in the team was playing in men. All of them, most of them who they call in their team, most of them they were, are playing in the young team. But I am the only one who play in the professional, you know, in their team. And I came twice against Sierra Leone, we win. I went back. I came back against Cote d'Ivoire yeah. in Gambia here. Yeah. And I, the I time, watched that game though. Yeah, I came lately, even my ticket was late. I traveled from Senegal, came to Gambia, and we were playing next day. And I even speak to Lamy Sar, may God rest in peace. I mean, I mean. I tell him I'm so tired because of the long journey. But he said, we still need you. I came second half. Even the game was not 100% well because I'm tired. But the fans were not happy. I can remember they were insulting our yeah. boss. Even our boss was having in the class because of people were disappointed. Yeah. But I stood, I stay almost a, one month to make sure we qualified in, in, in Africa. Because it's one that people said, oh, in Africa, they are finished. That's finished, yeah. You know? And we went to Africa, we made it, we yes, went there. You won, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And from there, I went back to America. So you see, we all sacrifice our... I could have get mad or said, oh, I will go, go back. Yeah, because but I, I speak to the I remember that was, a, that, was a, that, was a, that was a sad day for you and some of your players in yeah. that game. Yeah. The fans were all over, not happy with that yeah, performance. performance, yeah. Yeah, at the but independent stadium. In fairness, we still win 1-0, one, one but things we are not, people said, oh, in Africa, we are done. But we went to Africa, we made it there one not. We sacrificed a lot. We didn't go home. I stay here longer. I speak to my uh, team. I told them if I came back, I have to come back. Yeah. So it's, I'd rather stay here training. They said it's okay. You know, then that's how we, I went back to Africa and I came back and I make sure the team qualified. And even when we qualified, I went back and I have arm stream. Yeah. So when I have an arm stream, and the Cove, uh, the Cove Nation in South Africa, I came, my team let me come because they said, in the tournament, you'll be fine, I think. Yeah. But it was not 100%, so I came, but the coach dropped me, but he said, my muscle. But I speak to him, I will, I will be fine. So I think you should trust some of the players you need. You can yeah. see even the World Cup, they took some players exactly. who are injured, yes. he will come back. Yeah, you recover during you the process. Yeah, but yes. they, they let me down. 
you know, but that's why I say sometimes you feel disappointed, but you know what I mean? It's football. You know what I mean? But still, if you compare most of the players who are there, some of them now they are not playing, but still I am keep going it because I believe what I am doing. What is your connection with the current players of Gambian footballers? They get the current Gambian footballers. What is your connection? Do you speak sometime? Hey bro, how are you doing? How is life going? Mm -hmm. Hope you're coming back to the national team. Do you have that kind of conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have so many conversations. You know, I am I get more closer with Steve Trawale. We always talk about football. I give him advice, you know, we speak a lot, and he also have a big ambition, you know. Yeah. So I speak with Daudangom, you know, I speak with, you know, other players and, you know, about the, you know, the game, especially when the national team comes, you know. But those people are not the ones who speak in the team, you know what I mean? Yeah. When we come in Gambia, we play together, we have fun, you know what I mean? We all know who is who, we yeah. all know who is... You know what I mean? That's yeah, the important we, yeah, exactly. thing, you know what I mean? But exactly. You grew up together, so yeah. you know the talent you have. Yeah, 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 so yeah. The but Gambia qualified to the AFCON for the first time, which was the dream of many Gambians to take Gambia to the Africa Cup of Nations. And we went to a level that we really expect to reach. Mm -hmm. As a footballer who is still hoping to get into that national team, how do you describe that moment for Gambia? Does it take Gambian football to another level, or we still, um, at some point, need to do some so, uh, too much to, to reach there? Yeah, I think it was one of the beautiful things happened to Gambia, you know, when we qualified, because we were looking for it for so many years, you know, and we qualified it finally, and we went to the Cove Nation by surprise everyone. Yeah. We did so many well, and I was so happy with so many players too. They really did well for the Gambia. But the problem is, you know, I was thinking, we're gonna be like this, not yeah. like this, but this little bit. Yeah. But I still, I was thinking we are still like this because if you see that core of nation, yeah. so many players who play in that league, in that team. even in the starting team, yes. some of them are struggling to have team. Yes. And you can hear Gambian concept. Oh, just go, just them all. So them is not def, not play like when team munala gel, while his team is easy, they know easy for gel. Yes. But I was thinking now, this world is getting changed. Yes. Now it's not about playing for your national team all, only, yeah. but your, your consistency cons your at, the at the club level as well. Your quality yes. is important because now you can see they know African players. Everybody can play for the national team yeah. because that's the concept they have in Europe. Because you can see the scene of Mape. Yes, this dad we are asking money to play for his country. Yes, you can see the World Cup Cameroon versus yeah. Obi. Cameroon, the score, yeah, you know who score? Yeah. His mother came out said, "You were asking money for him to come and play for your." For you, yes. and now Swiss make him who who is, and now you guys are doing this. Absolutely. Alaba. So now they just you know sometimes they watch you. Okay, in the national team they will say, okay, let's try to watch him in the national team, and what he's doing in this in the team. Club scene, they exactly. try to compare that. That's why you have to be consistent. What you are doing in the national team, yes. and the has, to, when you has to follow up in, to follow in, like in, in the club side as the well. Club side. You know what I mean? So it's very, very, very important. Meaning that you know the Africa Cup of Nations should have take us our players to another on level. Another level, even yes. our even our nation, you know, yeah. but I can, sometimes you see it's still in the same place. So I don't know where is the problem. Yeah. yeah, where is the problem? I don't know. So that's why I think, you know, some of them with some of these ex-players, they have to sit down and talk about it, see how we're going to help each another. That's how I feel it, you know, because I, because if you go to other countries now, they are working with all their ex-players to, because most of their ex-players, they play Europe for yeah. 15 years. They know connections. One time I speak to Jato Sise. He's a good friend with Stam. Oh yeah. Stam who was coach Stam. Of, yeah, who was a Reading coach. He was yes. coaching Modu Baro yes. and stuff. Yeah. So those people little bit they know people. And football, we all want to go to Europe. So you need to connect people who are there. So I think my point of view, they have to not like they are coming to take places and stuff because if you watch interview like Ibu Sila one time he said, Oh Badembo, we are trying several times to meet with the GFA, but they will never Accept us. We had it on newspapers. Yes, yes. So we, even us, we are afraid of that. When, when we quick of football, we well, might be ignored. Yeah. And things don't have that, to that work is, like that. That is serious. You be, you know, the, the connection with the football federation and the players is not that cordial yeah. as others will have. Yeah, we watch it. it. We watch Kemo yeah. He said that yeah. Ibusila, Badembo, and stuff. You know what I mean? And that's things not supposed to. As far as they, they quick football, they still have something in their head. They are Call needed. them. Exactly. Call them, and next minute people they said DFA and said you said hey, we try to call these people to dialogue and how to see it, but they never come, they never respond. Yeah. But now those players are saying we try that a lot, and they even say names. Yeah. 
How yeah. do you project, you know, our local football competition in the Gambia? And what do you think is lacking when you are in Gambia and you watch Gambian football? Yeah, for me, I, I always respond how people are saying, like, so many pitches are not good. You know what I mean? You struggle to have a good pitch, which is very sad, you know? So how can you have a quality player yes. when you don't have a quality pitch? Because if you see, still now, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, that's why I said, so I see Musa Baro's agent is back here yes. looking for players. players yeah. Why he came back? Because Musa Baro did it. Yes. That's why they Ibrahim Akoli did it Absolutely. a little bit. Yeah. So now they said, let's go back and look for another talent. There could be more Ibrahim Akoli under the Musa Baro. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying I am League. happy to see those players yes. playing in Serie A. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which everybody has to be happy. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. it's not going to help them already. It's going to help our name in somehow to scout some players now. Absolutely. You can see so many young players now that is getting signed by Italy because of those players. Yeah. Because they already made because it. Because they, they perform at the highest level and they are consistent with their performance. They are there. They are there. Like yes. Musa Baro, I'm very proud of him. Yes. He's still in Saria for, for how many years yes. now? He's not going big teams, yes. but he's still in the he level. Maintained, of, he maintained the level. The he level. The level. You yeah. know what I mean? You yes. come to Omar Kohli, yes. which is very good. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? You oh, just yeah. give the Jew. Uh, you give the devil his Jew. Jew. You know yes. what I mean? That's yeah. how I am. You know, yeah. I am very proud of them because they still keep that momentum and still you will see them. They are Gambians. But some of them, they were in Saria, but they are not there anymore. Yeah. Which is not good, but yeah. they are still keeping that, you know what I mean, consistent there. Yeah. And now it's easier now. You can see Musa Musabaro's agent is here. They are looking for players again because of they are happy to see what they see and they know those kind of market now is working there. Yeah. So which is very good. But I think we have to be um, because football you have to be happy. Yeah. Because when you come to Gambia, players complain a lot. They are not happy. They are playing, but not they are happy. And football don't supposed to like that. Yeah, you have to be. You, you, you have, have to, to feel. You, yeah, you yeah. have to feel. Today I'm playing Manjai. I'm very happy. But yes. playing Manjai, boy, feel Bobo Bahut. Yes. Sarakunda is feel Bobo Bahut. And before my time, Sarakunda is was one of, one the, of best the best. One of the best. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah everybody oh yeah. want to play there. Oh yeah. Oh you, yeah. You 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 hate playing Samga there or other teams because yeah. the ball will run. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now those things, those 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 th uh, pitch. People are avoiding Av them. They're avoiding the speed, don't have even pitch. One time I went to watch Sarakunda is those people are saying we rather play in Brikama Kama. in the tough. Yeah. That is what many people say that they rather play Brikama than Sarakunda. Sarakunda and those pitches were supposed to be yeah. like one of the, 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 the You know what I mean? Which is very sad. So the pitches is very important players to be happy. Yeah. Because you'll be happy. Hey, they feel on your play. They pitch Bila. So you will happy because you saw you will show yourself more. Yeah. But you want to watch pitch, you want to watch the games and you see the games. The pitches are not good, the quality of the pay. You will see the quality is not there. That's why you see so many players say, ah, football is going to be for their leg. It's because of the pitch. You will not see the quality you want to see. You are controlling the ball, you see the dust is everywhere. So, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you rather want the ball to go out from your feet because of the pitch is very bad. Before you control the ball, it will take you like five minutes or two minutes. You know what I mean? So it's very, very hard. So the pitches are very important so that you will have good players from there, you know what I mean? So many players are getting injury mm -hmm. in the pitch because of their ankle, because of the pitch are not good, you know what I mean? So I think that those things also, they have to really, really try to be uh, serious on those things so that you can have so many quality players in those leagues. Because if you are, it's easier because when we were playing here, the pitches are very good. So whenever we go to trials, it's easier people to yeah, recommend. To, because to, that time you know, is, it's easier, yeah, you know to what give I mean? Your, to give your, to, you know, to showcase yeah. your, your talent. Yeah. You are watching THD, all, you know, TV, special interview coming to you live uh, from a local hotel as we continue following our Gambian players who plan their trade outside the Gambia are currently in the country for holiday with their family and their loved ones. Today we have very few questions before we go, but Umar Jassi, a.k.a. Waterman, is our guest. Before we end up this interview, we have a few uh, questions to go. What would be your advice to young stars that are coming up in this country? Yeah, like I said, uh, I always give that. It's patience, you know, nothing is easy. You know, so many players, you know, sometimes they said, oh, this team is not paying me money, I will not go to train. I know it's not easy, but, you know, most of the teams also, they are not having sponsors for this company. Yeah. So they are not having money you expect they will give it like that, you know what I mean? So all I can say to them is just be patient, you know what I mean? Just work hard, and when you have talent, just fight for it, you know what I mean? Nothing come easy in life, but that's all I can say that we all have the patience, you know, but now and it's easier to travel when you do good. Yeah. Gambia is a very, when you are a good player, people talk about you. Yeah. So when you start talking about you, it's easy to make name, yeah. then you can travel. Absolutely. But you have to be patient. You have to be work hard. You have to uh, have really, really motivation to do that. And all the motivation is 
I love to, I want to do, I want to do this. Yeah, determine and determine and stuff. So yeah. all I can say, the youngsters, because Gambia, they have so many raw talents. Yeah. You have hundred of Waterman, hundred of Steve, hundred of Musabaro here, but the, the mindset, focus, the mindset is, is not focused. It's well. different, and the yeah. environment and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's very, very important them, them to be half patient. You know, respect your training, respect what you are doing, and it will come. I don't know, one year, two years, three, but it will come if you have patience enough and working hard for it. And one thing we've also seen in Gambian players today is um, talking about the future, planning of the future. Many Gambians are now, footballers are now investing back home. Mm -hmm. Some support local clubs like Steve Travale, one of your dudes has just get into football management, mm -hmm. buying a club, or, you know, others invest in ordinary businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, what are your plans as far as Umar Jassi is concerned? Yeah, like uh, that's, those things is, is good, you know, some of the players are helping. I know we Gambians, you know, we like helping each other. So, so many players want to do better than this event. Yes. But, you know, we, we, most of us when we come in, we try to gather so many boots to give the players football okay. boots. Football, to, football, to, football boots and football jerseys, jerseys as well. And okay. stuff, just yeah. to encourage them for yes. now because yes. most of us, we are not that big name play, players to do so many things. Yes. So, other things we can do it, you know, and we've been doing that almost 10 years now. Yeah. You know, as far as people who know me, I think, you yeah. know, I've been doing a lot for those things, helping teams, talking to them and try to help a little bit. We have so many ambition of that, you know, like I said, like Steve Tarawale's team, which is very good. We speak about it and then, yeah. and, and, you know, like I, I uh, we were there yeah. with him and I also give advice to the management and the players. It's hard to have a team in Gambia yeah. because it's all about money. You don't yeah. have sponsors. Absolutely. So I told them, this guy bought this team just to help you guys to see how he can get other players outside like him. Yes, do and, the same thing. Yeah, and yeah. he's not having any sponsors' money. Yeah. The money he keep, that's the money he's paying you. Yeah. Nothing is coming in, yes. he's taking he's, out. He's taking so out. you guys need to yes. give him 100% more. Yeah. You guys have to be sacrificed yeah. from the coaches and down. Yeah. Because all the, I know all the teams for division here, not, you can see any sponsors from the team. Absolutely. But they are doing good. So the players also have to work hard. They have to really work hard to make sure, you know, everything goes as they are planned. Yeah. You know, we all also trying to see what we can do for Gambian football when you come to how to support the young support ones, the young and, ones and even, you know, what can take us yeah. further in when you come to Gambian football. That's more, it's more concern. Sometimes we think about that, think about it a lot. What can we do? What can we do in the right project? But also you need the right people to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who can help you and stuff. You talk about it and stuff, yeah. Well, unless you have any other important thing that you want to share with Gambians, but otherwise we have come to the, the, the time schedule for this program. But it's been amazing talking to you, just as brilliant as always. Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking, you know, for the voiceless, you know, talking about something that is also, you know, taking you to another level in football. Football and Waterman has always been the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't take football out of Waterman. Mm -hmm. So it's been a pleasure talking to you, unless you have other things to Gambian, particularly your fans. No, I'm very happy always. I say thank you for everybody, especially the fans. You know, if you go to my Facebook page, like one of my uncle always tell me yeah. when he watches my Facebook, he said, what I realized on your Facebook, you have so many people, you can go on your comments, you always have 200 comments. People, they will not say, oh, this, but they always pray for you. Yes. We want this because they know who are you. Yeah. So they are taken. So I always say thank you for those kind of people who always message you on Facebook, writing on your wall. I have so many messages of that. So in life, you know, people still believe in you. People right. still trust you, especially when you, they see you are doing good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When, you are, when I po post my achievement, mm -hmm. bro, I have so many... Uh, comments, so many messages. So those things also motivate me. So I said, thank you for those people and families, friends and stuff, you know. Yeah, I'm always happy, you know, to give my contribution when you come to football, when you come to my career. People can understand more what happened, not because of my own wishes or I went to just Europe to chill. Then I will not be in Germany because Germany is difficult. Yeah. I'll be in America because I was living one of the best life in America. People who know me, people who come visit me. Yeah. I was living in California. I can meet any kind of people in the world and I was having connection. Even without football, yeah. I could have made so many money. Yeah. So, but I choose to stay on my lane. Uh, which is football. Which is and football, yeah. You're you solely going to reach there, inshallah. inshallah we'll Thank you so very much. It's been Umar Jassi. A.K. Waterman has been our guest today on the special interview on THD TV. Follow our videos and, you know, comment, send us your comment, drop that comment there. Tell us what you think about our video. We'll be here talking to many of his colleagues who are in town.
you know, see how they are moving with their national teams and also their club side. Thank you for watching. Enjoy our video.